prepare for a thrilling reel of law enforcers caught red-handed on duty, transforming streets into a booze-fueled playground. Who needs sobriety with a badge, right? Yet, karma hits, and justice has the final say. Listen, man. Um, it's, rather, took, it's better um, to be honest. In I'm our profession, you. I took a lot of um, Benadryl. Listen, in our profession, you know it's best to be honest, right? No, I know. Drunk cops who got caught on duty. Get right over here. I don't give a f who you are. Get on your goddamn knees. Tearing through Key Largo, Florida at a whopping speed of 108 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone, this cop got himself in quite a bit of a pickle. When the deputy on the scene activated his lights, the white Chrysler remained unyielding and refused to pull over. <laughs> surprise. The driver turned out to be Officer Donovan, a 26-year-old Miami-Dade cop. The deputy, undeterred by this situation, proceeded to initiate the routine of hands up, turn around, and hands on your back. Of course, the officer played the I'm a cop card next. <laughs> so predictable. Turn around, do not face me. Turn around. Turn around. Just walk, walk right here. Walk right here. Shut the up. Get right over here. I don't give a who you are. Get on your goddamn knees. Hey, I'm a cop. Why are you, why are you acting like that? I'm a cop. Then you'll listen to me when I tell you to get on your knees. Once the suspect was cuffed, the true extent of his intoxication became apparent. Glassy eyes, slurred speech, and the unmistakable smell of booze. But the real twist came when a collection of law enforcement goodies, such as guns, a badge, and a body cam, got discovered. We gotta check this car first. We'll release the exit. Oh, Holy f what? Sarge, I can't see it. Well, that wasn't on when he passed me. No, he's, not on. No, he's drunk. Moving forward, Donovan had quite some trouble remaining silent during the Miranda rights. And he added more fuel to the fire by refusing the sobriety tests as well. Yep, what better way to make the matter worse, right? Are you willing to perform field sobriety exercises to dispel my suspicion that you're impaired to drive? No, sir. No, okay. Is this an agency vehicle? Yes, sir. This is an agency car. I just asked him how to run the tag. I just got here. So she doesn't want to talk? He refuses to do sobriety exercises? So, uh, oh, absolutely. He's up. Time to gauge the actual speed of the chase. And boom! It was recorded at 111 miles per hour. Concluding with a pit stop after a three mile police pursuit. As if the ordeal couldn't get any more dramatic, the deputy contemplated the fate of Donovan's cop gear. You got so far away from me after I turned on my lights that I couldn't get a, a speed. Once I got close enough, when he was still fleeing, it was 111. That was the, the top speed that I was able to record. Andy, if you want to just toss whatever you whatever you get, here's a box you can toss all his stuff okay. that we need to take. Well, the aftermath saw him facing felony charges of fleeing and eluding, coupled with misdemeanor of DUI. So, lesson learned, albeit the hard way. Speeding away with flashing lights on your tail is not the best idea. Three cop cars behind you. They literally lit you up right next to you. They lit you up next to you. And you still kept going at 111. I next over. to you. Next to you. And I pulled over, right? No, bro. No, you didn't pull over. You went for another three miles. And what's three miles? Lit it. Let right there, right? I am really just begging you. I don't want to go to jail. Coming across a cop who can barely keep his eyes open, that pretty clearly suggests something else was at play here. Despite clear signs to the onlookers, the cop insisted he was prone to seizures. So the responding officers, playing the role of the good guys, turned off their blinkers. Sadly, that failed to alleviate the situation. Did you do anything to celebrate today, man? Uh, no, sir. No? Sir. Listen, man. Um, it's, rather, took, it's better uh, to be honest. I'm in our profession, you. I took a lot of um, Benadryl. Listen, in our profession, you know it's best to be honest, right? No, I know. It was crucial to ascertain the officer's work status, whether he was off duty or on duty in full uniform and gear. However, this cop made that quite a bit of a challenge, though he did his best to answer coherently. 
Only if he had not continued to lean as much as he actually did. He said that his rifle was in the, in the back. Mm -hmm. um, it was in the center console when I talked to him. In a cup holder. It uh, it's no, not there. Uh, morning, welcome. Oh, what time did you get off work today, man? What time did you get off work? 6.30. 6.30? What have you been doing? I thought I was going to put the suit. The plot thickened when a can of beer was discovered in his car, shedding further light on the story. He's already disarmed, sir. Next up, a witness added another layer to the drama, revealing that the officer who claimed to be sick ran multiple stop signs. And that was not it. He also pulled up in the middle of the roads and swerved left and right. Lastly, he was found asleep in his car on the side of the road. From Lowe's in Mount Dora, all the way around a couple of blocks to the center street and whatever the street is. Uh, we'll give him a call back in a minute. I'll speak to the plane again more so. Yeah, center street and Firewood. Yes, sir. All over the road, stopping in the middle of the street, off the road, running stop signs, a lot of stuff going on okay. with this guy. Right off the bat, he denied drinking, despite the pretty noticeable smell of alcohol wafting off of him. And what about the slumbering and slurred speech then? Well, that was blamed on the three Benadryl he took earlier. It was quite a cocktail when mixed with alcohol. There is a open container of alcohol in your vehicle. Have you been drinking at all today? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's... Desperate to avoid jail time, the officer tried various tactics, even refused the field sobriety tests, though that only worsened the situation. So, of course, he found himself in cuffs, en route to an investigation by the police department. To go to the hospital. All right. I am really just begging you. I don't want to go to jail. Well, hey, we're on detain you, and we're going to figure it out, okay? Go ahead and don't get a oh, no, 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 no. Put your hands out, you're praying. Yeah. You're going to do it like this, you're going to get safe book, and you know how that goes, okay? Sir, so we're trying I didn't do anything to okay. be well, safe you're, book. You're under arrest. Some cops have a habit of shoving their entitlement left and right in hopes of being above the law. Same as the case here with this self-proclaimed officer who was at the center stage in this car crash saga. Now, even though everyone was pointing fingers, she still insisted on being the innocent party, denying any wrongdoing and causing it. So, there's, I'll talk to you separately. Yes, okay. There is um, one person that was flagging me down for this accident who's saying she's law enforcement and she doesn't, she appears intoxicated. There was some sort of 22 before I got here, but as I was driving past, However, tables turn when a witness, despite facing the intimidating presence of the woman's weapon, managed to record the entire incident. The footage revealed her aggressive actions, pushing him out of his own car and shoving him. Needless to say, her image took a serious hit after this revealing tape. So I'm mumbling to myself and then it's weird and so I'm basically was faking a phone conversation while I'm videotaping so, her. I need to understand I'm faking a phone conversation right now while this lady needs something on my dough. She's didn't know what to do. Hey, excuse me, please. please. Don't come at me. Please right get now. out of my car right now. Don't come at me right now. Now onto her version of events. She shamelessly shifted the blame onto the other party, claiming he hit her and yelled at her. And a touch of audacity, she asserted that being a law enforcement officer should exempt her from receiving a ticket. So, uh, I, I'd rather say that I don't believe you. We just have, I mean, you know how it works. We have an independent witness that you don't know, he doesn't know, that says differently. It says they saw you. He's a f asshole. I swear. Okay. Why do you think that? Because he yelled at me the second I got out of my car. And okay. Officer Sarah, the supposed gentle soul, reacted pretty strongly to being accused of driving under the influence. As the investigation loomed over her, she adopted a highly defensive stance, deflecting the subject at hand without offering any logical sense. How much have you had to drink tonight? What do you think? I I'm asking you. Two glasses of wine. Two glasses of wine? Yeah. Okay. Anything else besides that? No. Okay. What kind of wine was it? Cab. A cab? Okay. Where did you have those wines at? If she was as sober as she claimed to be and fit to drive, the field sobriety test should have been a breeze, right? Wrong. 
Miss Sarah refused to cooperate at all. On top of that, if you do if you do refuse, that could be used against your court if you were to be arrested for DUI. So I'm just asking, what are your witnesses him mm -hmm. right now? I have, well, I have two witnesses, and then I have the observations of two other officers that were on scene, including myself. Okay. So I'm going to ask you again, would you be willing to do some field sobriety exercises? No. No? Okay. With no other option, the self-proclaimed cop found herself in cuffs. And the situation escalated when she heard the charges against her, leading to a heated exchange, a string of curses, and a temper tantrum. Eventually, she reached her final destination. AKA the police station. You're being placed under arrest for DUI and battery. Battery. <laughs> you didn't do it like this, you're going to get safe book, and you know how that goes. Okay? Sir, we're trying I to didn't do work. anything to okay. be well, safe book. You're under arrest. The way you're acting is for what? Right? For DUI and I, battery. For what? Okay. Be battery on what? On the person you hit. Who? Okay. I didn't hit anyone. I am honest to God being serious with you. What have I done to you for you to treat me like <laughs> Huh? Officer Augie here turned out to be one of those cops who not only drove under the influence, but managed to wreck a car in the process too. And the said car was a police cruiser at that. However, when he refused to undergo any field sobriety test, that's when the matter got worse. I'm not trying to be a prick. I'm not trying to be difficult. You gotta understand, it's, it's my job. So don't treat me like that. If you want to be done, I understand that. So if you want to leave, that's up to you. Do you have your keys here? Where's your keys to the building? You got all that stuff? I, no, I want to make sure it wasn't on that ring in there and you need. Initially complying with disarming requests, Augie took a sharp turn when asked to sign up for drug and alcohol tests. He bluntly refused and straight up claimed he was done with the whole situation and said some rather colorful words to his superior, no less. What's going on though? Tell me what's I'm going done. on, bud. I'm done. Trust what do you mean you're done? Do you gonna go with me and take the test, Augie? You're refusing it? You don't want to do that. I'm done. Okay, so what does that mean? All right. Are you under the influence of something, Augie? What's wrong with you right now? I don't understand I'm that. done. Augie's resistance intensified when they tried to take away his gear. Despite attempts to stop him, he stormed out and neglected all the potential options for him in this scenario. However, the tears and outburst from him hinted at a deeper story at play. So, Augie, are you okay to drive, brother? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'm worried about you. Yeah. All right, well, get going then. Do what you got to do. All right. Augie, you need to, you need to get it. You need to relax. No, I. Huh? What'd you say? Who is? You just wrecked a cruiser. It's not the end of the world. The officer seemed to be oblivious to the fact that he totaled a police car and escalated his situation by blaming his supervisor for treating him like a bug. Quite the perspective, right? I am honest to God being serious with you. What have I done to you for you to treat me like? Huh? What the? I don't know. I didn't wreck the cruiser in there and then have to ask you to come to take the test. Right okay. And again, I understand that, Augie, that you're upset. I get that. You're having a tough time right now with everything that's going on. As another cop attempts to mediate, even questioning Augie's fitness to drive, he remains unyielding. And that went as far as playing the victim role while thrashing around. How much did you drink today, Augie? A lot. You know he's going to want to do a test, right? <laughs> no, I'm talking about your driving just like we would anybody else. You know what I mean? Not an employment test. He's going to say, hey, this guy's driving a car. We need to test it. <laughs> and I mean, you got the right to refuse it, but we got to go through the process on that, Augie. After a prolonged standoff, the officer finally realized the futility of dragging out the situation. And about time, too. He agreed to be taken in and faced charges of DUI and totaling a police cruiser. Now, with the weight of the repercussions hitting him hard, all of it made it hard for him to stand up straight. Or can the fruits of any of your statements be used against you in any subsequent criminal proceeding? If you so request, a person of your choice may be present to serve as a witness during the interviews. If you refuse to answer questioning related to the performance of your official duties, you'll be subject to dismissal. Do you understand that? When I saw you, you were outside of the vehicle. What's going on tonight? In the sunny state of Florida, a deputy was discovered taking a nap with his foot on the brake, car in gear, while he snored away. So, a concerned citizen armed with a camera attempted to wake the sleeping man. However, he proved to be a pretty heavy sleeper. Sir, are you okay? Hello? Hello, sir? I might have a single one over here. Sir, is your foot on the brake there? Hey, sir, are you okay? 
Excuse me, sir. Are you okay? And then think turn the vehicle off, okay? Upon the arrival of another cop, it was time to decipher what was going on. The dozing deputy, still in the driver's seat, was asked to step out. Did he, though? Nope, because the man was having difficulty understanding the situation himself. All right. Have, 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 have a seat over there. Step over here, sir. I'm going to take a seat. Have a seat. What's going on, sir? Are you okay? I'm not okay. You're not okay? No. When I saw you, you were outside of the vehicle. In the car. Yeah. Car still in drive. What's going on tonight? You had loads of drink? Huh? Have you had something to drink tonight? No, I'm just waiting. I'm just trying to get home. Questions about alcohol consumption arose as the officer connected the dots between the vehicular slumber and the pool of vomit nearby. Despite the drowsy cop playing the waiting for friends game and refusing tests for sobriety, the suspicion radar had started pinging. What's your name? John. John what? Guzman. John Guzman. Where are you coming from tonight? My house. A friend's house? Okay. I live right down the street. Where's your, where's your driver's license, sir? Uh, the cop was so out of it, he showed no interest throughout the process. And on top of that, his refusal only complicated the matters further. To remain tight-lipped or to take the test? That was the question. Turn around. Turn around. You've been drinking. I have not. You have. I can still smell it on you. Cops and expired tags don't go together. But cops with not only expired tags, but also getting pulled over by a fellow cop? <laughs> now that just screams attention. The I smell alcohol kicked off the routine next. So what did he do? He flashed his badge, like that's gonna keep him out of jail. Got you stop your speed. My bad, bro. I appreciate it. Cincinnati. Okay, okay. Anything to drink tonight? Nope. Come on, if I check your eyes out? Yes, sir. All right, bring your head out here just a little bit. Okay. Follow tip my finger with your eyes only, though. Yep. Good. Man, how much you had to drink? Literally nothing. I took my friend home. All right, I'm gonna get you out, make sure you're okay, drive. Okay. Come step on out. Before he got his hopes up for getting off scot free, the pen test needed to be done because the guy started claiming he was as sober as a judge. All right, just stand right here, okay. face out towards me. All right, have you followed tip this pen with your eyes only? Don't be okay. at all, okay? Do you have any recent head, neck, or back injuries? My neck hurts, yes. Your neck hurts, yes. do you have any issues with your knees? Ankles, My knees hurt, yes, too. Yes, sir. Take any prescriptions? No, sir. Seeing a doctor for anything? No, sir. Glasses or contacts? Nope. Diabetic or epileptic? Nope. All right. The drama intensified with the breathalyzer showdown next. The officer straight up refused the test. Seemed a pretty confident move on his part. But the only question was whether it would work. I refuse all that. You can call your sergeant if you want to. I don't need to call my sergeant. I'm, well, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, my I'm sergeant. just saying. But like, I had literally have had nothing to drink. Nothing to drink, then it nothing. would be triple zeros, nothing. right? You mean you both know how it goes. I know how it goes. Yeah, me too. And you've been drinking. I have not. You have. I can still smell it on you as you're talking. You, you cannot smell anything on me. I can smell, I can smell, smell gum because I gum. Now, following that refusal, it was time for the walk the line spectacle. And the performance that he displayed was enough to reveal the extent of his intoxication. With your right foot in front, touching heel toe. Right foot in front, okay. Heel toe. Arms out of your side. Stay in that position until I tell you to start. What yes, you're going to do is take nine heel toe steps down the line. I don't know if I can take nine steps, but I will try. They're going to be heel to toe steps. You'll be able to take nine heel toe okay. steps, all right? Unless you got Shaquille O'Neal's feet, you'll be fine. And they don't okay. look like Shaquille O'Neal's feet. So nine heel toe steps down that line. Predictably, the one leg stand test yielded the same embarrassing results though the officer proceeded to blame the drinking on his friend. With no other recourse, the only option left was to cuff and bring him in. 1,023, 1,024, 1,025, 1,026. I can't, my balance is off. All right, I, I, now you can stop, that's 30 26 seconds. 26 seconds, yeah, I'll stop, right. let's say. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Are you serious? Yes, sir, you're under arrest for operating vehicle in Paris. Put your palms together, bring your arms back. Do you need another set? What'd you say? Do you need two sets on? No, I don't. You don't? 